Welcome back to Z-Speed and thanks for tuning back in. Today we're going to be removing the upper half of this plenum and hand sanding this down to a machined metallic finish like you see right here. We'll also be adding a plenum spacer to this VQ35DE. The DE is notorious for having decreased airflow to the front cylinders versus the rear, as you can see by this huge slope downwards towards the front of this plenum. So hopefully by installing this, we'll increase our mid-range torque and even some top-end power. So if you're interested in something like this, just stay tuned and we'll get right on it. So I purchased my plenum spacer from Z1 Motorsports. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but I think this is a pretty high quality spacer and it comes in right around $200 versus the Motordyne plenum spacer, which is around 266, which is also extremely high quality and one of the first plenum spacers to be produced. But we're gonna open this up and take a look and see what's in the box. So you can see right here that it comes with a nice assortment of hardware that we'll be needing and we'll also be using some of the original hardware from the plenum as well. We'll be mixing the two, but we'll go into that in a little more detail later. It also has a very nice set of directions here and it goes through all of the rebolting procedures and which bolts you'll be using where, which is very nice and makes it much easier. Also provides us with the picture we'll need here so we don't have to take a picture of this bolt down process and you know rely on our phone. We can just lay this right in the engine bay and go directly by this picture. So that makes it very, very easy. So let's take a look at the spacer itself. And this is very high quality machined aluminum. I mean, this is as smooth as silk. So that should assure us that we don't get any air leaks around the plenum once we place it in. Also, one uh, end is a little bit thinner than the other. So that is how we'll be getting more air towards the front of the plenum. Let me show you, this is the thin end right here. And this is the thicker end right here. So we'll have to make sure we place it on correctly. But yes, very high quality, um, very impressed with this. So we'll also be getting a another OME plenum gasket that sits on top of the spacer and we'll have one below the spacer as well so we won't have any leaks. So let's get started with the install. First thing we'll have to do as usual, anytime we deal with the plenum, we have to remove this strut tower brace. And by now you should be used to it if you've worked on your engine at all. So what I'm gonna do is take this 14 millimeter socket and work in an X pattern here and release four bolts on each side of this strut tower brace. And it really comes out pretty easily. Next thing we'll be doing is releasing the electrical harness and it's attached to both sides of the strut tower brace, but it's super easy to remove those. Now that you've got your bolts removed from the strut tower brace, we need to remove this electrical harness from the brace itself. And you can see there is a little clip right here made of plastic, so you have to be pretty careful with it. I'm using a pair of needle nose pliers, but I'm being very gentle here. If you were to squeeze these too hard, they probably break. So just uh, take it real easy on these. But once you compress those, they'll slide right out of the strut tower brace, and then you can lift it up and separate the two. Now let's take a look at the driver's side strut tower brace. You can see I had to cut a zip tie right here that was attached to the brace and that's replaceable later. And we'll have to depress this tab right here and pull this part of the electrical harness up off of the brace itself. You can see there's a little metal 
a tab that's coming up out of the brace and you just depress this tab and this slides off. It's not too difficult. Once you get that removed, then we're free to remove this whole strut tower brace from the engine bay. So next thing we'll need to remove is the mass airflow sensor from the filter head and you're going to need to disconnect the negative battery cable so that your ECU doesn't see you uh, disconnecting any of the sensors in here. So I recommend you do that first and then once you get that negative battery cable removed, you can just easily detach the mass airflow sensor and tuck that out of the way. And then we can go ahead and loosen the bolts that hold the intake together. Next, we'll be removing the bolts that attach the air intake tube to the throttle body and to the air filter. It's very easy to do, whether it's stock or aftermarket. You just loosen those up and then you can separate the air filter and then you can take this end over here that's attached to the throttle body and pull that loose. Now you can see this filter slides right out and then we can go ahead and remove the intake tube from the throttle body. Now, since we're gonna be polishing the upper half of this plenum, I'm going to remove all this and normally you stop right here. Just remove the 18 bolts, lift up your top of your plenum and slide your space frame. but we're gonna keep going here. We're gonna take this intake tube completely out of here and then we'll be working on throttle body next. But before we get to the throttle body, let's take this vacuum tube off on the passenger side. You just take the hose clamp, slide that down, and just be careful and slowly remove this vacuum tube. I've removed it before, so it comes off relatively easy here, but yours may be kind of stuck. Just take your time, make sure you don't damage the tube. Once you get it off, you can kind of rotate it up and out of your way. Next up, we'll be removing the throttle body. You can see there's four bolts holding this in and they are Allen bolts. So you'll need an Allen wrench to remove them. Um, there's not a lot of torque involved here and there's pretty easy access as you can see right here. You can visualize all the bolts so we can get our wrench in there and break those loose. Once we break those loose, we can remove the throttle body from the engine bay. Now you see I have my Allen wrench out. I'm going uh, to break each one of the bolts loose. It's not too hard at all. Then I'm gonna hand spin each one of those bolts out and remove the throttle body from the upper half of the plenum. There is a gasket between the two, so be careful not to drop it into the engine bay. That's exactly what happened to me. Don't wanna lose that. But um, if you can, go ahead and get a new gasket because you may get an air leak if you don't replace that gasket. I have reused them before, but if you get an air leak, then you probably need to replace that gasket. Now that we got the throttle body removed, all we have to do is remove this hose clamp right here and pull this vacuum tube off and we're ready to unbolt the top of the plenum. It's not too hard at all. Just squeeze that little clamp, move it down and just be careful not to tear the vacuum hose when you remove it. Mine's been off before, so it comes off pretty easy, but it's kind of a snug fit. So take it slow and easy so you don't damage it. Now it's time to remove the upper half of the plenum so we can take it off and polish it. And we're, we talked about this diagram earlier. We're gonna start at bolt number 18 and go through to bolt one and break each one loose. And then we're just gonna kind of hand spin those bolts out. So I'm starting at number 18 right here, breaking that one loose. Now I'm just following the diagram. I'm going to 17 and then 16 and on down to number one. So take your time, break them loose, and then we can get these bolts removed. Now, before you completely remove the hardware, you do need to label each bolt one through 18 because we will be reusing some of the old hardware in conjunction with the new hardware. So you'll need to know which bolt is which. So you can see I'm removing bolt number 18 right now. I'm going to place a label on that and I'll be placing all the bolts in a container so we'll have easy access to these bolts later when we go to reinstall the plenum. Once you get the final bolt out of the way, we're almost ready to remove the upper half of the plenum and take it out to be polished. Now, before we can lift it up, there are two coolant hoses that are attached to the upper half of the plenum and they can be a little bit hard to remove. You can see, first thing I'm gonna do is kind of lift it up and I'll, that'll give me much better access to the two coolant hoses. 
now that we've got this lifted up you can see the coolant hose right here there's a little hose clamp so i'm going to take my needle nose pliers slide the hose clamp down and then i can go ahead and grab that little coolant hose and start to twist it sometimes they're baked on there now i've had mine off before so mine's going to come off relatively easy here just take your time and go kind of slow and once you do remove it cool it will spill out so you might want to have a little towel there or something to put in the end of the hose to keep it from leaking out everywhere you're just going to spill just a little bit of coolant not a lot now it's time to remove the second coolant hose. It's easier to access from the passenger side and basically exact same setup. Remove the hose clamp and then you can remove the coolant hose. You'll probably spill a little bit. Just be careful with it so you don't damage it. And now we can remove the upper half of the plenum and begin the polishing technique. Now it's time to buff the upper half of the plenum. I'm going to show you how to do it by hand. Now you will need a Dremel to actually do this and a drill. And we're going to use a couple different wire brushes, a coarse wire brush and a medium wire brush. But we're going to first sand the entire upper plenum with this wire brush. And it's a coarse wire brush just to basically knock down some of the roughness on top of this plenum now this is a cast aluminum piece if you've ever worked with cast aluminum it has a rough texture because of the way they cast it and the easiest way for us to smooth this out a little bit is to take this wire brush and just slowly go over every square inch that we can actually touch with the uh, you know wire brush here and you won't be able to get every nook and cranny but we'll do our best and you just want to get it as smooth as possible. Later, we'll be using the Dremel to do some, you know, really tight areas around the corners and whatnot, and to grind it down a little bit more and to get more of a mirror finish. It won't be um, exactly a total mirror finish. It'll be more like a machined look, but this works pretty well, and it's, and it's much cheaper than if buying a polished plenum. You could probably buy a mirror finish plenum on uh, Amazon for about 200 bucks but we're just going to kind of do it ourselves here and you will need a buffing kit for your dremel so those will go about for about 15 20 bucks at lowe's or home depot you can pick up one with a bunch of different little wire wheels and some buffing uh, wheels on those so just take your time and we're going to start to smooth out the roughness on the upper part of the plenum first must have spent at least 30 to 40 minutes uh, smoothing out this cast aluminum area and now it's time to move on to some sandpaper once you get like the basic roughness off of this and uh, we're going to have to switch over to some sandpaper and we're going to use good old elbow grease and a sanding block and i'm going to start off with let's say at least 600 to 800 grit sandpaper and uh, see what that looks like you know if you want to go like a 500 go ahead or if you think that that's too rough you can go up to a thousand but i think i started off at 800 with mine and i'm going to go ahead and just start sanding the entire top of this thing with a sanding block and just actually sandpaper is alone now if you want to go ahead and start weighing this down that wouldn't hurt either you can get some of that wet dry sandpaper i started doing that later on but that gets a little messy but first off i just wanted to kind of just hand sand it dry and just see what it did and it really you know started to come around it really started to smooth out now obviously the more work you put into this the better the finish will look so just take your time and and smooth it out as nicely as you can okay it's the next day and i just want to make sure you're wearing some safety equipment i got a respirator and some eye protection on and ear protection actually i didn't really mention that earlier but now i'm going to go break out the dremel and i'm kind of want to smooth the top of this out with one of these little grinding wheels now honestly the dremel is better used uh, around the edges where it's really hard to get the sandpaper but um, I wanted to smooth this top part out and then I'll have to go back over it with sandpaper. Ultimately, sandpaper and a sanding block is the best way to go. But you can, you know, grind off these little rough areas on top where these little areas stick out around the plenum. And it's easier to use the uh, Dremel for that. But ultimately, the best look I noticed was just using a sanding block in your hands to 
just go over everything and it takes a while you know i spent about 30 40 minutes uh the night before going over it and now i've used the dremel and i'm going to smooth the dremel to areas out again with some more sandpaper and i'm staying right around 800 to a thousand as far as the sandpaper goes and you're just going to hand sand the more time you put into this the better it looks so take your time and just keep sanding and sanding and sanding Okay, just once you get to the point where it's smooth at a thousand or 800 or a thousand, you wanna to switch to 1500, then you're gonna to go to like a 2000, and then you can end up around 2500. I wouldn't really go 3000 because I'm gonna use some metal polish at that point, but yeah, just keep going until you get to the point where you're happy. And then once you get it um, smoothed out, we can go ahead and start using some Mother's Mag Polish next. So once you've got it as smooth as you can get it with the 2500 grit sandpaper, it's time to move on to some Mother's Mag Polish. And this stuff works great on aluminum. You can pick this stuff up at Walmart for you know five to 10 bucks. I'm not sure exactly what the price is, pretty cheap. And you can see I've got a clean rag and I've used a generous portion of this Mother's Mag Polish. And I just lathered it all over the aluminum. And at first it looks dark and dingy as it starts to strip off the aluminum finish. And then it gets brighter and brighter as you go along. And once you get the rag um, all dirty, you can go ahead and grab a new one and do this process two or three times until you get to the point to where you're happy. You can see it's really starting to brighten up the whole exterior of this upper plenum here. And uh, it's amazing what this stuff will do. So just take your time and go over it as many times as you want until you're satisfied. So at this point, I'm good with the way the upper plenum looks. I'm very happy with the appearance. And so we're gonna take some dishwashing detergent and a hose and we're just gonna scrub this down and get it as clean as possible to get rid of the excess residue. So after cleaning the plenum off with detergent and a rag, you can see it really brightened it up even more. So now I just need to make sure we get all the water residue out. And I have uh, some compressed air that I'm gonna use. If you don't have compressed air, then you can let it dry overnight. But basically I'm just gonna blow out all the little channels and holes and definitely gonna blow out um, all of the areas where, where the vacuum tubes will be going and to where the uh, coolant hoses will attach and any of the little bolt holes that you can find. We just wanna make sure that we get all the debris and water out of these areas before we bolt it back up to the uh, lower part of the plenum. So make sure that it's nice and dry and cleaned out um, before you take this and bolt it back onto your engine. Okay, now that we're done polishing the upper half of the plenum, it's time to go ahead and place the plenum spacer in the engine. You can see the rear of this spacer is thinner than the front of it. So this end right here is definitely thinner and it gradually gets larger towards the front of the spacer. So this will definitely help increase airflow to the front cylinders there. And we're gonna go ahead and place it on the plenum, lower part of the plenum now. You can see that I've left my stock OME gasket right there. And we're gonna just place that plenum spacer right on top of this. So just be very careful. Make sure that you get everything lined up and you can see that these little slots fit right on those little posts. It's pretty simple. You just wanna make sure that you don't end up getting anything else uh, pinched underneath the spacer. So just be very careful about that. Um, sometimes there's a little ring that goes around. The, you can see I'm put, pulling it back right there. A little a plastic collar that uh, goes right around the oil fill area and make sure that you, know, you don't get that pinched underneath the plenum spacer. So now that we've got the plenum spacer seated, it's time to go ahead and add the OME gasket that came with the kit. You can see it right here, it's a little metal gasket and there's a couple little arrows right here. It's kind of hard to see, my focus is a little off, sorry about that. But there's two small little arrows right here and that should be facing towards the front of the plenum right there. So make sure that that's lined up on the front and we can go ahead now and drop this in. We just want to make sure that it's lined up 
uh, nice and even with the bolt holes and make sure that there's nothing pinched again underneath that. Just like we uh, were checking for things pinched underneath the spacer, just take it real slow. Don't want to bend it, it's made of metal so it's easy to bend. So just drop it on top. Everything should line up here. And now we're ready to take our nice polished upper half of the plenum and place it on top of the lower part of the plenum there. And then we're ready for the bolt down process. It came out pretty nice. I'm, I'm happy with this. You know, you can make it look as shiny as you want. So now I'm gonna slowly lower this thing down and try to be very careful not to, you know, mess up the gaskets and the spacer here. So just go very slow and drop it down nice and easy. So once you get the upper half of the plenum seated correctly, it should be nice and solid and it shouldn't move whatsoever. So just take your time. You can see I've almost got it seated, but not quite. And now it's seated perfectly and it's nice and solid and it won't move at this point. I just briefly wanted to show you those two little arrows that were out of focus earlier. Make sure they're facing towards the front of the engine. You can see them quite clearly there. Now we're gonna get our manual out and we're gonna start the bolt down process. We start at bolt one and work our way through bolt 18. There's quite a few steps here. We're just gonna work our way through each one and follow the manual. So you can see there's quite a bit to it here. So now as far as the directions go, they want you to hand thread all the bolts in and make sure that nothing cross threads and that makes a lot of sense to me. I'm gonna start off with these back three bolts here and we're gonna start off with bolt number one, which is right in the center in the back and we'll be using the longest bolts that come with the kit and the, they are the 70 millimeter bolts and we'll also be using some bonded washers. So what a bonded washer is, is basically a washer with a little rubber band backing on it right there. You can see that little rubber backing. That's what we'll be using in these top bolt holes up here on top. All six of those will end up with a bonded washer. So I'm starting off with a 70 millimeter bolt into the number one bolt hole right here and I'm gonna loosely thread it in. I kind of overdo it right here. I really don't need to go that far down. You really kind of want to leave them a little bit looser and go through and, and uh, hand thread all of your bolts at this time before we get ready to torque anything down. We wanna make sure that nothing cross threads. Now it's time to drop the three front bolts in and we're gonna actually be using the original hardware here and that is the original three, one, and six bolt right there. And I'm glad we labeled everything. So now we're gonna move those forward and use those in the actual five, two, and four bolt hole. We're also gonna be using the bonded washer, of course, but that's why we are glad that we labeled all of our old hardware because we will be intermixing some old hardware with all the new hardware. So pay special attention to which um, requires new hardware versus old hardware. Once you get the top six bolts threaded in, we're gonna just basically follow the directions. They're really awesome directions. We're just gonna follow each step. We're just gonna hand thread all the new hardware and reuse some of the old hardware. We're just gonna walk through each step. It's very easy. I'm not gonna walk you through that because it's self-explanatory and the directions are just really well done. So once you get them all hand threaded, then we're gonna go ahead and start the bolt down process. After you've got all the bolts threaded, now I'm gonna go and hand tighten every bolt as tight as I can get it by hand. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the torque sequence. But I'm gonna wait till after that is done before I reattach the throttle body and the two coolant hoses. Now it's time to do the torque down sequence one through 18. You will have to have an inch pound torque wrench to do this part. And the original torque specs were 114 inch pounds on the original plenum without the spacer. But now we're gonna go a lot lighter here because of the spacer. We're gonna go between 44 and 61 inch pounds. So I'm gonna choose 60 inch pounds. And we're gonna do two passes. We'll start off at 30 inch pounds. We'll make our way through all 18 bolts. Then we'll come back for a second round at 60 inch pounds. And we'll just go one through 18 again. And then our plenum will be nice and torqued down and we'll be able to uh, finish reassembling everything else. 
Now that we've got the plenumol torqued down to spec, I went ahead and reassembled the throttle body and the intake. Now it's time to drop the strut tower brace back in and bolt it in. Unfortunately, since we raised the height of the plenum, we're gonna have to adjust the strut tower brace to fit back in the engine bay properly. So basically the problem is that we're touching right here on top of the plenum and right here. So we're gonna have to elevate it with these washers that came with the kit, which is nice. So we're gonna place that washers, uh, the washers between the chassis and the strut tower brace, but we're also gonna have to shorten the strut tower brace because we're elevating it. So we're gonna break this little washer loose right here, and then we can spin this entire part of the um, strut tower brace, and we're gonna bring it in one full revolution. So once you break it loose, you're gonna just whip it around one whole revolution clockwise, and that will shorten it up a little bit. You may need to do one or two revolutions. I only had to go one to get my strut tower brace to line up with the bolt holes. But once you get that shortened, all the bolts should line up now. Don't forget to tighten this bolt after you shorten your strut tower brace. And now we're ready to go ahead and torque our strut tower brace back down to the chassis. And you can torque it to 46 to 47 foot pounds. You're obviously going to need a foot pound torque wrench at this point and just go through all four bolts on each side of the strut tower brace and make sure that everything's torqued to spec. So if this video helped you out, how about giving me a big old thumbs up? And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Come on, join the Z Speed team. We'd love to have you on board here. And until next time, you know what to do. Just keep on repairing.